Welcome to the Treasury Elite Leadership Series. I would like to thank all our viewers and members for supporting this noble cause of Treasury Elite, whose main objective is networking, knowledge sharing, and mentoring. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Abhishek Goenka, founder of IFA Global and Treasury Elite. We bring in world-class FX and Treasury practices for companies across India for the last 15 years. And today we have Mr. Vivek Chand Sagal, Chairman, Madhusan Group, and Madhusan Sumi Systems. Mr. V.C. Segal, Chairman of Madhusan Group, established Madhusan in 1975, along with his mother. In 1977, he entered the field of manufacturing, cable and wire manufacturing unit. Today, Madhusan is a USD 11.29 billion group, presented in over 41 countries with over 270 facilities across the globe. Madhusan Sumi Systems, the flagship company of the group, is one of the largest auto ancillary companies in India. Under the leadership of Mr. Sagal, Madhusan has evolved as a leading full system solution provider to the global automotive industry. It features among Forbes Asia Fab 50 companies, and the group is ranked weight second among the global automatic suppliers, automotive suppliers. Among the many accolades he has received, ENY Entrepreneur of the Year Award for Manufacturing 2012, SCO 2013 for Auto Ancillaries by Business Today, CEO of the Year 2015 by Business Standard, and many others. Mr. Segal is always open to new ideas and has successfully spread his philosophy of openness down the line in Madhusan. What lots of people do not know about Mr. Segal is that he travels 300 days in a year. Obviously, COVID is keeping him locked, but his greatest inspiration is Lord Krishna. Welcome, Mr. Segal. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Thank you very much for having me. Glad to have you today as a part of Treasury Elite Entrepreneur Series. In the next 35 minutes, we will love to learn from your experiences. So my first my question pleasure. to you, sir. I think the one common thread which I could think with a lot of global CEOs would be they are not doing this for money. I would like to ask you a single biggest reason for you to get out of bed every morning and get yourself to work. What is it that drives you today? So I think, you know, uh, what drives you is a, is a very difficult question to answer. But uh, I think I feel that my people, the team that I have uh, globally, is working so hard to put our group together. And I feel kind of embarrassed staying in bed maybe a minute longer. <laughs> you know, that's the uh, uh, thing of it. These, the, you know, the team that you have, the people that surround you are amazing people. And they're all, uh, it's, a, it's a constant battle of uh, uh, giving uh, encouragement to the other. And really one would feel cheated uh, if you, uh, you know, spend too much time in the bed, like we've been seeing in the last uh, four months, being locked down in, in, uh, over here. But uh, I think uh, nothing motivates you more uh, than when you see your people are doing good, they enjoy their work. Uh, there is a great atmosphere where uh, we are operating. Uh, we are very, very excited with all the uh, kind of products that we make. You know, we are 100% focused on the automotive side. So automotives is always a great uh, uh, motivator. So uh, uh, it's, it's really wonderful to wake up in the morning and know that you know, you're going to be seeing this latest car today and this is what you're going to be doing and all that. So it's really amazing. <laughs> That's great. So cars and people and the team really keeps people you motivated first. to get up. <laughs> so now you and your mother started the company in 1975 with a small sum of 1,000 rupees. And now you have over 1,45,000 people globally with over 270 manufacturing plants across 41 countries, a cumulative revenue of almost 11 plus billion dollars. What is your secret sauce 
to ensure everyone is aligned to the vision and the culture of the company. So, first of all, you should forget the word culture. It doesn't exist. The only culture that exists globally is agriculture. And believe me, that's <laughs> very effective. Uh, I think what is very important for you to understand is uh, India was 563 countries which became India in 1947. So what's another 20, 30, 40 countries? You know, so we are Indians are born, uh, if I can use the word, we are experts in anything related to culture. So uh, we learned this particular thing much, much before. My mother and me started uh, Mother Son as a small thing because I was about 18 years old at that time and my uh, marks in the school and uh, the psychologist was not very good. So uh, my mother was very worried. My father as well was very worried that what's going to happen to this poor kid. And he's our only son. So we set up this small company called Mother Son. And I kept telling my dad, dad, there's something wrong. You know, people will think I'm making nappies or something like that. <laughs> but uh, uh, today I wouldn't uh, even think of not uh, changing the name or anything. So Mother Son is uh, on everybody's lips. And uh, of course, uh, the ability to take a name and then build value into that was taught by my seniors to me. And... Uh, we could do it very well. Today, we are synonymous with uh, very good quality. Uh, we, can, we are fearless. We go into any country. We are 41 countries. You know, it's, it's an amazing thing. People have difficulty to uh, keep one joint venture alive. We have 39 joint ventures which are alive. Uh, we have 22 acquisitions. So, you know, we are fearless that way. And I think Indians by nature are fearless. You know, we will go anywhere. That's the wonderful part about us. So I, I believe that uh, Madhusan has uh, imbibed a lot of qualities from this great country called Hindustan or Bharat or India, whatever you prefer. I think uh, there is a lot to learn here. And uh, most importantly, the, the philosophical side, India has been a great teacher. So we picked up all these pieces from India and then put it into our business and it works very well really. <laughs> so the secret sauce that you were talking about is actually a very small uh, uh, thing if you can pick it up from Bhagavad Gita. Lord Krishna tells Arjun that you know one must by himself better himself. So forget about benchmarking X Y Z companies globally. Just benchmark yourself and then keep doing better than what you have done. And that's the secret sauce because then you don't have to worry. A you don't have to pay the consultants. Two most importantly you don't have to. Uh, uh, go and try to take secrets out from other companies. You know what you have done and then you all have to do is just do better than that. So see, you save a lot of money and of course you become better and better. <laughs> great, great. Focus on your work and keep experimenting. Uh, yeah, but keep doing better than what you did, that's all. Of course, you know, of course. One day you'll become the best. Agreed, 100%. Madhusan Group have moved from products to solutions with a very strong focus towards QC, DD, M, S, E, S, the quality, cost, design, development, management, safety, environment, sustainability. How have global customers and partners helped you in this journey? Can you share some examples? So, you know, initially when we started off with Maruti Suzuki, that was our first customer and Hero Honda at that time, now Hero Motor Corp. Uh, we at that time used to have only three. That was QCD, you know, quality, cost, and delivery. That was all that was there. And then after that, we learned uh, and sort of grew up, we evolved, and we realized that you know design is very important. Then QCD DM and manufacturing, of course, is very, very important. Then you know, every single thing got built up. Today, environment, sustainability, and all these particular things are very, very in, in essential. So as time moves along, you have to reinvent yourself. You have to find newer, newer methods and newer, newer uh, ideas to make yourself ahead of the curve. So today, if you're only going to go and talk to a customer about QCD, he'll think you're coming from the caves or something. You know, you're thinking you're really 50, 60, 70 years ago. Today, the essence is on environment. It's on sustainability. It's about uh, QCD DMS is all given. Uh, 
safety is another one which has now been added up uh, very, very essentially. So I think the ability to learn constantly, reinvent yourself constantly and keep adapting, that is the secret uh, which allows you to become close to your customers. See, we are a 100% OEM uh, uh, supplier. So the OEM has different needs and we have to keep measuring up to his uh, uh, this thing all the time. So that's probably the way. So we can adapt very fast. I don't think today the people who are going to be inventors and things like that, you know, one out of a million or 10 million can probably become uh, successful in that. But I think the real uh, secret today of the manufacturing is the ability to adapt very quickly and successfully. It means giving the quality and the delivery and the cost and all those particular advancements. So I think uh, how quickly do you adapt? How quickly do you satisfy your customers' ever-changing needs are very, very important. And that's essential. So, so you say you have a strike rate of 5% when it comes to innovation. You have often said that you used your imagination since knowledge is of, often overrated and often the best strategy is not to have a strategy. Yeah. You are highly That's inspired. Right. You're highly inspired from Einstein and Rabindranath Tagore. Please elaborate on your innovation culture. I'm sorry, I'm using the word culture. Mm-hmm. And whether you have scientific system around that. So, you know, don't confuse philosophy with, uh, with the running of the company or the unit or something like that. Philosophy allows you to pursue a particular way. And that way, uh, you are not perfect. So you might be going on that particular way. You will have to go a bit left, a bit right. But whatever it is, you have to pursue that particular philosophy. Uh, philosophically, when you are strong, then operationally, you are also giving the chance to the best of the professionals to run that particular organization. So me and my son both are not running anything. We are not the managing director or the CEO of any company. We have rank professionals who are the CEOs and uh, the, uh, the presidents of the company. Uh, the same thing is applied even outside India. Uh, we don't believe that, you know, I have to have my relatives only and then only we can run that particular group or company. In fact, uh, uh, if you're a part of my, um, you know, my blood relation, then you can't be in the management of the company. So it's a very different way of looking at how to run the companies and uh, work together with the teams. Right in the beginning, I told you, I am only what my team is. My team is the core. You know, we have people who have been working here for tens and tens of years, you know, decades they've been working here. And uh, we don't have any, this thing that, you know, we have to go to, we don't go to the best of the colleges to hire the people. We just go to normal colleges, normal, regular, uh, uh, this thing, colleges. Pick up the guys. We don't look for the top end marks or something like that. There's no competition there. And uh, also I joke with them, you know, I get them much cheaper than the, the big <laughs> hot shots, you know, and what salaries they're drawing from college and all that. We are looking for people who are hungry. Uh, I think uh, uh, Rabindranath Tagore, I really admired when he wrote Akla Chalam, to walk alone. Because if you're only going to be doing copying, 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 then something is wrong. You, know? you have to look at the dynamics of where you are, what is the environment, and from that environment, how can you then take advantage? So we do the same. We're in 41 countries where we are. You know, We are picking up companies the management is still the same, order book still the same, everything still the same. Yet, before we took it over, they were making losses. Once we come in, we bring in our DNA and we talk to them and make them understand what we are doing. And lo and behold, they're all making money and things like that. So it is a way of empowering the people. And today, the object of Mother Sun is to bring in more and more people who can then develop this in fact, uh, you know, between you and me, the COVID, uh, this thing is actually vindicated what Mother Sun is doing. Everybody was thinking, you know, one or two countries are going to become the production houses of the world. And today, everybody was, you know, you have a more nationalistic kind of a mindset coming in. So we are really vindicated. We are laughing our guts out because, you know, we are in 
making plants and running them in countries which are not supposed to be production countries and all that. But I think Indians are very, very strong innovators. You know, when we, uh, when we think we have to solve the problem, there is nobody who can beat the Indians when it comes to Jugaad. When the only thing is we don't follow it up scientifically. So that's, that's something which I, I let my teams take care of. But the ability is more to understand the problem there in that country, that particular customer, that plant, and then use your entire group strength to come to rescue for, of that particular plant, make them strong, and one day they become a big, big, big support arm for you. So these are the kind of things. So we think that Einstein was very, was really genius. I mean, he, he didn't uh, finish his seventh standard also, if you know that. And he said, imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge. So knowledge will get you from point A to point B or whatever. So imagination is very important. And somehow, you know, we are, we, uh, I see a lot of young people today, they're running after, blindly after MBAs and, you know, all those wonderful education, this thing. And they think there's a kind of a magic wand out there. The moment that is there, oh, wow, you know, I made it or something like that. So I keep, uh, I keep advising them that, no, it's not necessary for you to do that. More important is how do you imagine? Imagination is so important, you know, because whatever we do, we can make it better. If only we can imagine that, you know, this has to be done and we are clear on our, uh, no. All these things are wonderful uh, things that we have. So, uh, uh, having said that, you know, uh, uh, one thing I'll, I'll, I'll admit, you know, I couldn't convince my son. My son also went and did uh, his MBA from uh, US. It took me two years to make him deal on his MBA, which is another problem that I had. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think that's the reason he worked somewhere outside and then probably joined you uh, for some time, isn't it? Uh, no, we, we got him trained in uh, a German company and then in right. a Japanese company. But yeah. uh, he was working with them for three, three, four, four months each. But then he came back and then, uh, you know, took me two years to make him relearn his MBA and become an entrepreneur. Because, you know, we are entrepreneurs. We are the guys who have to think uh, where nobody can see, we can see. You know, so that education is, is not a great uh, <laughs> thing because they're only taking you down a, a beaten track or something. I'm sure he's lucky. A lot of people will disagree with me. <laughs> no, no, I completely agree. I mean, I always feel that the more younger you start, the, the early you fail and the mistakes are smaller in nature. And then you make all the mistakes by the time you are 25, 26. You know, so, so I think it always works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but you know, at that age, you don't want to be wrong. And you will do everything and anything to make sure that you're not wrong. And that's an amazing thing to learn. <laughs> uh, yeah, humility comes later, 100%. In right. Japanese, there's a very wonderful saying. They say that if you're walking and you stumble and you fall down, don't stand up without picking up a stone or something. You must pick up a stone or something. Even from that fall, you have to learn what you did, why you had the fall, and how you're going to avoid it in future, and what did you learn from that? So it's an amazing way of trying to tell you that even a fall can teach you, and things like that. So the uh, knowledge that you pick up when you want to become an entrepreneur, you have to do everything. Just go and talk to one person who started his own company, and how much that poor kid has gone through to open a plant, which will make him a better person than what he is once he has come out of that. Some people uh, get uh, uh, frustrated and want to leave it and go and try the other side. That's the biggest mistake they make. They have to stay on and keep on trying. You know, it's this way or no other way. That's the uh, way to go. So I think the, uh, the youngsters, my advice to them is, decide early in your life. Do you want to be a professional or do you want to be an entrepreneur? Entrepreneur is very exciting, but hey, you'll become bald like me, you'll lose a lot of hair. <laughs> but if you're going to be a professional, hey, you'll have a lot of hair, but maybe less money. <laughs> right, right, right. Completely agree, completely agree. 
In fact, I was reading uh, Richard Branson uh, some other day, and he said the same thing that somebody gives you an opportunity, first say him yes, and then find a way how you want to do it. But don't tell him no. I mean, you're closing the doors. I mean, it's so similar to what you said. Hmm. So no, no. In in Manson, it's a part of our DNA, not yeah. yet come through. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So as you said, you evolved from a top line of say 2.2 million US dollar in 1993. When you raised your first money, when we went public, yes, when that was around seven hundred thousand dollars you raised uh, from the market. Yeah, and yeah. since then you have grown thirty-five percent year on year. Today our top line is around sixty-two thousand crores, and a person who invested around twenty-five hundred bucks has gone richer by around forty-four lakh rupees. You have always yeah. been guided by your customers. You know the customers have told you buy this company, make this product, mm. they trusted you. You. and you you there's a very strong partnership with the customers which has happened over the years so please take us through your four c's that you mentioned about business which is followed over the years so uh um uh, the ability to understand that customer is the first most important c always if there is no customer every effort that you are doing is a waste of time correct right you ain't going to get paid somewhere down the line if the first c is missing then you're in big trouble so the second c very very important is cash capital you have to understand the value of money the ability to understand that if cash is not coming my guru uh, mr nimish shah uh, taught us that top line is vanity bottom line sanity cash in bank reality You know, Correct. So amazing uh, thing that we learned. Uh, he they taught us about gross. They never talked about margins. You look at everybody else in the in the this thing. They would talk about margin. Itta margin, bad gaya, good gaya, you gaya, wo gaya. We are the only company that give you a guidance on gross return on capital employed. So the ability to understand how important cash is on your uh, particular uh, uh, how do you say operations and all that. the third c for me which is very very important is collaborator it's the collaborator who uh, will teach you jaise hum log ka guru ka sthan hai you know, we give uh, respect to our guru the one who who teaches us so for me collaborator is a very important thing because collaborator is telling me what to do how to do and we don't have to redefine him and tell him that no no buddy i can do it better this way or the other way but we have seen that over time and uh, 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 experiences we become as good if not better than the collaborator and the collaborator really enjoys that because he sees no no teacher in the world would ever be unhappy seeing his student going one step higher than him you know so i think the the third c which is for me is very very important is your collaborator or your teacher the fourth c is a very important pillar in the society it is called what we call the community which community we are in my workforce is coming from a particular society so the ability to contribute back to the society is very very important now these four are the very important pillars of our business so the uh, customer crucial uh, the ability of understanding cash because no cash no business third is uh, uh, the uh, uh, the collaborator the right. teacher and the fourth is the entire team that we have this is the community where we are in we can't look at looking at you know trying to solve problems of india but wherever my plant is in around that i can solve whatever problems i can and i think that is the four c's that we believe in and uh, of course there are multiple other uh, things also which are there are important but i think these four are very strong legs to a table which will give you a lot of sturdiness to withstand a lot of uh, pressures which are coming globally sure sure so over the last 60 years the car production has not come down globally and once again we have demand in during covid times you are seeing picking up in america europe china but china is huge the industry is changing very fast as we say we are in the vuca world and today we are in the era where total market cap of tesla is more than the combined market cap of gm ford and fiat chrysler how is the industry shifting 
Your thoughts on this? So, you know, let's not confuse market cap by a direction, all right? I, right. I, I right. can't uh, comment on that because all of these guys are my customers anyway. So, one should not look at um, just a market cap as an indicator. Uh, let me take you back about uh, seven, ten years. And, you know, there was a company called Enron. My God, <laughs> what a blast of uh, capital that company had. What the share prices, un unbloody believer, right? Well, how do you think about it now? So, these are all points Thanks. of time. So, we, we don't, we don't uh, look at that. I think uh, automotive is something which has been very misunderstood. A, a country like India qualified it as a luxury. I don't know, at 47 degrees centigrade outside, if you call car a luxury, okay. So if you say so, I'll agree with that. But uh, the same is with the, also the rice. No? If you buy a normal rice, it's 2 rupees a kilo. You can buy basmati rice also at 80 rupees a kilo. So I don't know what would you want to convert in that way. So, automotive is to D, uh, uh, a very important aspect, especially after COVID-19, which has really changed the mindset of people. They need, they actually look at it as a personal uh, device which is going to protect them. So, it's like a PPE, because a car is totally under your control. The interior, everything is there. Try sitting in a car, uh, which is a taxi today, you'll understand what I'm trying to talk about. Try sitting in a bus, try sitting in a plane. You know, uh, it's, it's hilarious uh, what's happening today. So I think a great comeback for automotives. For no reason they were being uh, battered because everybody wanted disruption. But the disruption got disrupted. So uh, that's a thing over there. But uh, look, I have been doing 40 years, we have been doing only automotive. I have grown exponentially i'm only i mean whatever numbers you're talking about is after my public issue when i start from where i started you can't imagine the kind of numbers that i will tell you what what numbers how we have grown <laughs> so i would i never even looked once at a power sector or you know let me make something else or nothing only automotive in automotive we have grown and delivered what we have delivered 35 percent growth year on year on the top line, 32% wealth back to the investor, time and again, for 32 years, back to back, right? So why suddenly people had a, a kind of a insect in their mind, no, 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 there's something wrong with automotive, you know, we have to disrupt it. But automotive is a very, very crucial part of the GDP of a country. Yeah. So if you put automotive in the center, and then you start building up the raw materials, the, uh, you know, you talk about iron ore and all these ores, then you talk about steel, copper, aluminium, yeah, you can go on, then you bring the banks, you bring the petrol pump, the pops and mom, garage stores, and you put the whole thing together. It's an, a massive, massive motivator for the GDP. So I think people took it for granted a bit too much. So maybe one and a half years, two years, we have seen the consequences of that. Today, Petrol prices are going up. Diesel prices are going up. Is the cost of oil going up? No, it's the government tax that's going up. Right. Imagine tomorrow if it becomes all electric as what people tell you that it's going to happen. Where will the government get the money from? They will tax you on your... Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you're going to tax at that time. Hopefully, I'm there to see what they will tax us for. But I, I'm just saying that people uh, thought a bit too much. And mostly the people in the... Uh, investment banking side and these kind of guys, they actually got carried away by this. But I believe that automotive has a very, very strong uh, future. We will continue to do so for the next uh, uh, maybe 25, 30 years. And I think somewhere down the line, we will find ways and means. See, uh, the ability to do well uh, today is defined, you know, I've, I've done well. Oh, great. What's the first thing I buy? I'll buy a house. And what's the second thing that you'll buy? Car. It's a car. Your In car fact, for the, young, the for, the, for the young ones, the first one is going to be the car. People who just come out of college and feel that they've made it. The first thing is they're going to buy yeah. a car with an EMI. 
Yeah, and, and that, that's what I'm trying to say. That you know, I have yet to meet a person who's gone to a dealership with the mind that you know I'm going to buy a car, and then he has bought a minus and come. Yeah, it's always a plus. He's yeah. gone one, two rungs higher than what he can afford because of the word that you used, you know, EMI. So he will go higher on that. So I, I, I think there is a lot of uh, uh, juice left in automotives. It will do very, very well. But I don't get uh, uh, deterred by what the market cap or what company is. That we don't worry about too much. That was just on a lighter note, even I agree. So I understand that your biggest inspiration is Lord Krishna. And you have been very, very well versed with Gita. What are your three major learnings? Of course, it's a ocean, but three major learnings which keep coming into your mind every time you come across a situation. Please take us through your spiritual journey. So, first of all, let me correct you. I don't understand a word of Gita. That's too much of Gyan for me. I just read it blindly like a, a small child is reading and uh, he's kind, he understands what I'm saying. He understands it by mispronunciation of whatever the wonderful words he uses. So I think first of all is to be able to understand that if you think that you know more, wow, uh, great, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed. So I'm not a gyani of uh, Gita. I just read it because it gives me very good vibes. And uh, time and again, one or two here and there, you know, you pick up something and you say something. Like I told you, you know, one must by himself, pick himself up. And we thought about that particular thing. We said, that actually, the boss is saying that, you know, we have to benchmark ourselves. Don't benchmark X, Y, Z. So, you know, in his own way, he teaches you. But me as a jnani, no. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry I to disappoint you and your viewers that I'm not a jnani. I am a very simple guy. I just read uh, his thing because I believe that sound is the origin of everything. And the, um, each uh, verse of Bhagavad Gita is very well balanced. And when you read it, it's a wonderful thing and very good vibes comes inside you. So you should do that. The only 700 verses that you have to do. So, uh, but Learning from him, what three things you want to know? Uh, I think your uh, your uh, focus is always on three, so maybe you should add three somewhere. Five. Into your five. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought three was better. But I, I believe that uh, uh, the ability to understand that uh, if you do good, you are not going to you you shouldn't worry about anything else. Uh, once uh, Arjun is asking him that, you know, I, I don't understand the scriptures, I don't understand anything. So I'm absolutely doomed. So Lord Krishna says, no, no, you know, if you do good, then you don't have to worry about anything else. Just keep doing good. Now that may be an explanation of dharma, it could be an explanation of karma, whatever you want, it can be that. So the ability is you must do good. If you can keep on doing good, that's great. If you can keep doing better than yourself, wow, that's an amazing thing. And most importantly, that the ability is to do work without expectations. You know, our acquisitions, we have a strike rate of 5%. 20 deals we look into and we'll pick up one. Something the customer is not happy with, something I'm not happy with, sometimes the company which I'm going to take over is not happy with that. So, <coughs> Apologies. Uh, it can be that, uh, uh, you know, for whatever reason, it, it's not going to happen. Uh, in hindsight, when you will think about it, you will say, thank God I didn't take that company. You know, there, there's so many uh, this thing over there. Uh, I'll give you one example. I don't know how much time we have, but I'll give you one example. Uh, we, we, uh, uh, there was a company which had come in, you know, Toyota had sold their plant to Devu. Devu had come in from Korea. And they said, oh, Mr. Segal, you must uh, supply wiring harnesses to us. So he, we sent three of our engineers to Korea and all that. And uh, we uh, were very happy that we were going to get, you know, Toyota had gone, but we will get uh, Devu as a customer. And we had uh, started uh, making a new plant and everything all that. 20 lakhs was a lot of money for us at that time. So we had paid uh, the contractors and everything was happening. 
and then suddenly it happened that um, the devo didn't give the order to us it was an american company who came and he took the order at a lower price than me and went to me i was very upset i said oh my god boss i lost 20 lakhs in this my father was almost going to kill me but uh, anyway we survived that and then eight years later devo went bankrupt that guy must have lost tens or twenties crores of rupees you know and i was saying thank god boss thank god that i lost 20 only i didn't have to contribute more so you you have to be a, a believer and know that you know sometimes he doesn't give you something this way you're good so take it D don't have to go for an any mera izzat ka sawal hai whatever <laughs> people like that i think <laughs> i think i think it's so much about connecting the dots and you do not come to know till the time your life is over you know we we start comparing the balance sheets every 5 years but ultimately the the journey is too long and you never know what will help you what in this entire journey and we take it too too seriously i mean we have to let it go as you said yeah you're not so, supposed to <laughs> <laughs> so so i i had a lovely time uh, talking to you sir and uh, i could just say one thing that uh, of course i learned a lot from you during this a short conversation and i'm sure all my viewers who have been listening to you uh, would definitely gauge a lot of learning from this entire conversation the journey have been very vast i would say i would use the word vast because there's a lot of action that you have done in the last 40 years lots of up downs you would have faced but i'd love to meet you and feel that energy but of course during covid times we are on the air but uh, it's it's been a lovely discussion sir thank you so much for your time thank you you're most welcome please 